So uh, I had a pretty shaky start to this year. Uh, you know, it's fine. Life happens. Life happens to everyone. But what it did mean is uh, I ended up on like this six to eight week. Oh, it's a uh, six to eight week pure bender of bruising and no training. Uh, and then I had an event up at Love Wife Cove. 54k, about seven and a half thousand feet. Pretty much zero training. And uh, I thought, well, let's see if I can get through that. I ended up doing okay. I ended up doing ranking 52nd out of the 123 entrants. So that got me thinking, though, well, what can I do? Uh, so I had some events booked in this year. As of May, I've got one event every month going forward. And I kind of uh, thought to myself, well, at the end of it, I'm going to see what it is I can actually physically and mentally conquer. So I've planned this event for October. That is going to be the culmination of my year. And it is the most brutal thing I can think of doing. I don't think anyone's really done it before. And uh, I don't think the party want to, to be fair, because I don't want to do it. But that's what this is all building up to. So I decided more for myself than anything. I'm going to video record this year, record all my events, see how I get on. The idea being October, see if I could take on this challenge and uh, even become a Guinness World Record holder if I do. So event one, not counting the long as an event, that was a training run. Event one is the uh, UTS 100 miler through Snowdonia. So 100 miles through Snowdonia National Park. Uh, it's about just over 31,000 feet of elevation. By far my uh, toughest run to date. Quite, uh, but it's gonna be a special one for me because sadly my dad, my dad's been diagnosed with cancer um, and he used to take us to Snowden when we were kids and uh, so I haven't been back since I was young with him and I'm taking him with me so he's going to be my crew him, my brother, my two boys and uh, it'll be our last final trip up there so it's going to be yeah, it's going to be a special race for me. What it also means is that uh, <laughs> can't push you out on that one because <laughs> there'll be no reach show next year because he won't be here for it. So, need to make it count this year. So, that's May. Coming up in May. With May, I'm doing that. And uh, we'll see how we get on. Okay, event two is in June and that's uh, in Jaw 24. It's a 24 hour race around Reading Way uh, and it's a five mile loop. How many loops can you do in 24 hours? It's not a bad little one, I've done it twice. I've done it once virtually in lockdown and done it once as an actual event. Uh, got my 100 miles both times then. It's got a couple of little hills in. Uh, so my thought with that is I don't know how well I'll be recovered from Stodonia by that point. It's only three, point half, four weeks in between the two events. So I'm not going to go crazy. I'm just going to get my 100 miles and then leave it at that. I'm not going to strive to do any more than that. Um, I get that one in the bag ready for July. July is a, another 24 event. This one is by Crooked Chats, which so that's who these guys are. Uh, and it's one of my favorites. I mean, you talk about a niche event. It doesn't have a huge turnout each year. Again, I've done it twice, once virtually and once as an actual event. But 
basically you get given a hill, you get given 24 hours and you've got to see how many times you can climb the hill. The idea being trying to climb the height of Everest in 24 hours. So just 24 hours a hill with peaks, man. It is absolutely savage. It's like not just physically, but what I like about it is the pure mental endurance you need to suffer to keep going up and down the same short hill over and over and over again. It is brutal. Uh, but it's definitely one of the highlights of my year. You know, like I say, definitely a niche event. It draws a, a certain type of person. But after the snow, don't you? I think I should do okay in that one. So that takes us to August. August, I'm off to Sandringham. Sandringham 24. It's another uh, 24 hour, five mile lapped event. But Sandringham will be flat, man. It's been there a few times, it's flat as anything. So last year's winner, she got 120, 120 miles. So what I'd be looking to do there is at least try and match that. If not, try and get 125. My thought is after all the elevation training I'd have done uh, in the lead up to it, and it's my last 24 hour endurance event of the year. Uh, hopefully, if I recover correctly, I should be able to get 120. Hopefully 125. But that's gonna be, that's not gonna be like a draw. That's gonna be fucking balls out. Go for it. And if you cream in, yeah, yeah, cream in. But you know, really push that one hard and see exactly what it is I could do. So that takes us to September. September is uh, big sky, so 64K. So winding the mileage back a bit now. Uh, 64k through the new forest. Last year I won my age group and I came fifth overall. Uh, it's a good course. The only downside to it is the new forest and it's on all those hard compacted tracks. Uh, so it's quite, it's almost borderline road run. Uh, you could easily do it in a pair of road trainers and have no issues. But it's also a new forest so it's absolutely stunning. Uh, it's really nice course, good countryside, well organised, really well organised, actually probably one of the best organised, apart from crooked tracks, you know, brilliant, uh, brilliantly well done race, so yeah. takes me to my last event in October. Um, I used to raise a lot of money for a charity called Judith's House to look after not just kids with cancer but kids with all kinds of life limiting conditions. Uh, but people stop sponsoring me man because I do all this stuff all the time so it no longer becomes unusual. So I decided to make my own event that I'm actually trying to get registered as a Guinness World Record because I thought to myself man I could you know, I'm never going to be the fastest guy. I'm never going to win these races. I'm not that like, but I can endure, man. I can endure a lot. My gift is to cope with physical and mental pain very, very effectively. So I thought, okay, that's how far can we push that? How, how hard can we make something? So they look after deaf and blind children. So I thought, I mean, just think about that for me. Deaf and blind from birth. I mean, can you think of anything more horrendous? Yeah, I just can't even comprehend it. So I decided for 24 hours I'd be blindfolded with noise cancelling headphones stuck on the running track for 24 hours to try and rack up as many miles as I can with no sight or hearing. And just, I mean, just the mental side, like just me in my head, 24 hours, let alone the physical. 
people make it the most brutal thing I've ever done. Uh, and that will be the culmination of all of this year's training and events. So, so that's it. So I'll post the ones as I go. I'll post the events as I go. See how I get on. Don't be a tight ass. I'll put a link in to the children's charity. Chuck me a few quid, man. And that's this so decent for some, some families who fucking need it. <laughs> <laughs>